All right, let's say we have an equal number of red and blue points in a plane. Here I've got four of each, such that no three points of either or mixed colors lie on the same line. Now since there are an equal number of red and blue dots, then each red can be paired with a unique blue via line segments. As in I can link this red and this blue with a line segment, and now they are paired. I can pair this red with this blue, and I can do that for every point to get some pairing configuration. Yes, you can only pair two different colors, and every point must have exactly one partner, so to speak. You can't pair one red with two other blue points, for example. Okay, now what we need to prove is that for any configuration of n red points and n blue points in the plane, such that no three are collinear, there's always a way to pair the points such that no line segments intersect. This is actually a Putnam exam problem from 1979 with a very clever solution. Not really gonna give any hints, but if you saw this video I made a while back, well, the solution for this problem is very similar. So for those who wanna think it over, here's your chance. Otherwise, let's get to the solution. I'm gonna keep working with this configuration of four red and four blue points, but the proof will apply for any number n of each color. Now there are numerous pairings that exist. We saw this one that had no intersection, but there are of course more that exist like this here. But since there are a finite number of points, then there must be a finite number of pairing configurations. So for this set of points, we'll just say there are m pairing configurations, p1 through pm, one of which we're looking at now. It could be p4, p7, whatever. But the key to this proof is ordering this list in a clever way, and the way we'll order it is by the total length of the line segments that pair all the points. I didn't put an axis here or define distances, but if we did, and then added the lengths of all the line segments you see here, we would get some number associated with the pairing configuration, and that is how we will order this list. Meaning P1 will have the shortest total length, and PM would be the longest. And yes, there could absolutely be ties, by the way. P3 and P4 could have the same total length, not an issue. Now, I don't know what pairing we're looking at or where it is on our list, but what we need to show is that if there is an intersection that occurs, like we see here, then there is a pairing with a shorter total distance, as in there's something further up the list. To do this, first realize that for any intersection, we can form a quadrilateral by connecting the four points that make up those pairs. Now it's kind of easy to see that if we change the pairing to include these two sides of the quadrilateral instead of the diagonals, then the total length has gone down. We have a new pairing that is higher up in our list. But to really prove it, we'll label the intersection point X and the four other points A, B, C, D. So the distances can be labeled as such. So from basic triangle properties, we know that AX plus XC is greater than AC. That's just coming from this triangle up here and the fact that if you sum the lengths of any two sides, it will be greater than the third. If we do the same thing with this triangle, then we get BX plus XD is greater than BD. Then we can add up the left sides, which will be greater than the right sides summed together. Then I'll just move these terms around to get AX plus XD plus BX plus XC is greater than AC plus BD. But AX plus XD is just AD, the length of our pairing line segment we have here. And BX plus XC is BC, the length of the other line segment. Meaning that the sum of the two original line segments, those diagonals of the quadrilateral, is greater than the total distance of those two side lengths. Or looking back up here, just visually, these two line segments that crossed are definitely going to have a greater total length than these two sides, which don't intersect. And this will always be the case. So what we have just done is found that if any intersection exists, then we can change the lengths so they are part of the sides of that quadrilateral instead of the diagonals. And in doing so, the total distance of the line segments must go down. If some arbitrary configuration has the intersection, 
there must be another configuration above it with a shorter total distance. So this tells us that P1, the configuration with the shortest total distance, cannot have any intersections. Because if it did, then we could find a pairing further up the list, but there's nothing there. So it all comes down to that same idea of ordering things in a way where you can prove that the top of the list satisfies some condition, like line segments not intersecting. Because if that condition was not met, then you could construct something higher up your list, which is impossible since, well, you're at the top. But if you did not get that, I actually have another puzzle for you guys, which is similar-ish. And it's another Putnam exam question. So let's see what it is, and I'm going to set it up with an example. Let's say we have a finite set of points in a plane. I'll work with five right now such that the greatest distance between any two points is one. So there are no points further than one away, but there can be, and there are in this case, more pairs that are also a distance of one away, like these two and these two, all a distance of one away from each other. So that's a total of three pairs that have that max distance. So writing this out again, the total number of points is five, and the number of pairs that are a max distance away is three which, just so you know, is less than or equal to 5. We need to prove that this inequality always holds. For any number of points in a plane n, the number of pairs with that max distance, m, is always less. Now I'm going to cover the solution to this problem in the next video, which will be out on YouTube soon, but it is available right now on Odyssey, link below, where I will be cross-posting videos from here on and occasionally posting content early. For those who don't know, Odyssey is just another video platform, just like YouTube, but I wanted to give you guys a non-YouTube alternative where you can also support the channel if you choose. Over there, you're also going to find several other educational creators I know many of you are familiar with, including Veritasium, 3Blue1Brown, Electroboom, Cold Fusion, Minute Physics, and plenty more. And it's just like YouTube, you don't need an account to watch, literally just click the link below. But I hope some of you guys do create an account so you can like, comment, and all that. So that's it for this video, links are down below, and I'll see you guys over on Odyssey, or here, for the next video.